Hey, what's going on YouTube? My name is Kieran Tross and I want to thank you for clicking on this video today. Uh, today's topic is going to be how to properly manage your break glass accounts. So one of the reasons why I was prompted to create this video is because I've had discussions with clients and I've asked them how they're managing their break glass account and the responses have been all over the spectrum. Whether there's some of them who don't know what a break glass account is and some who have it implemented and don't have enough break glass accounts in their environment, or they have a, a break glass accounts and they've reached a, a good amount of break glass accounts in the environment, but they're not properly managing those break glass accounts. So this prompted me to create this video. Um, I'm hoping that on the back end that somebody out there watches this video and says, you know what, we need some assistance with our IT environment and they reach out to me and I can provide some consultation for you. Uh, so you can reach out to me at uh, cloudscholarslearning at gmail.com. I'd be more than happy to have a discussion to you about your Azure environment and how uh, Cloud Scholars can help you out um, in terms of optimizing your Azure environment. All right, so now that we got that out of the way, um, one of the first things I want to do is I want to define what a break glass account is. So a break glass account is an account that uh, is an emergency account. And what that break glass account does is it uh, provides you a way to still have access to your Azure environment in the event that you uh, accidentally lock yourself out, probably through a conditional access policy. So um, let's talk about some of the steps of you know, going through setting up your break glass account, not only setting them up, but making sure that you are probably managing those break glass accounts. So the first one is, so when you create a break glass account, you wanna make sure you create a break glass account with a complex password. It's extremely important that your password is complex. You don't wanna make anything that's easily guessed. One of the next things you want to do is, I know a lot of companies out there have, you know, privilege um, access management or privilege identity management tools, um, like a PAM tool, like a CyberArk, or you may have something like a Delenia, or even if you're using Azure PIM, but you need to make sure this break glass account has a permanent role of a uh, global administrator. Next up is passwords should never expire. So when you have your break glass account, you want to make sure your password doesn't expire. This break glass account, you got to make sure, you got to remember, you're not going to be signing with it every day, right? This is only in the event of an emergency. And then plus, we'll get to later on, testing. So you don't want to set up a break glass account and then it's going to go through your password policies where you need to change every 90 days or 180 days or whatever your policy is. And then you have an issue, you go to sign in with your break glass account and then all of a sudden, you know, the password has to be changed or, you know, you can't get in because nobody's used it in a while. So you want to make sure the password is set to never expire. Next, your break glass account should not be anything you have that syncs from on-prem. It should be a cloud-only break glass account. If you have it on-prem and you're having issues with your AD or somebody set up some policy that causes problems with AD, you're not going to be able to get in. So it should be a cloud-only account. The next up is credential management, right? So I wrote it up here as well. So with credential management, you want to make sure that only the right individuals have access to those credentials, not only those credentials, but also the knowing what the break glass account is. So it's really good to make sure that your break glass account is in some type of vault um, and that this way that you can be able to access that and make sure that you're able to see what's going on with that break glass account. So the credential management is very important for you for your break glass account. Another thing that you want to make sure with your break glass account is the way you're storing those passwords. So when you talk about credential management, sometimes you may have one person who has half the password, another person has another half of the password. Plus, you also want to make sure that the break glass account, you could use something like FIDO keys. So this way, if you are uh, out of your system, emergency account has a FIDO key that's associated with it. So now it doesn't even have a password, you have a key. And then this way that you, you it, it also helps you from getting hacked. For any of your break glass accounts. All right, so you have a break glass account, right? And the break glass account has uh, policies associated with it. Well, I would say your environment has policies associated with it, like conditional access policies. But it doesn't make any sense if you have a break glass account and it still has MFA on it. So we're making sure that there's no MFA tied to your break glass accounts. Now, what I will say is I have seen some clients out there who have. Uh, MFA with their break glass account, but they may have a different MFA solution. So let's say if you're using Microsoft Authenticator, you may say, okay, I'm going to use my break glass account, but this is going to have Duo associated with it. So in the event your main um, uh, Authenticator 
uh, has some issues and you get locked out, you're still able to get in. So um, I really don't like using any type of um, MFA with break glass accounts, but that is another option for you as well. Okay, so you need to monitor the activity of your break glass accounts. It is very imperative that you do this because remember, if you're setting it up by the way I'm talking to you about, you're going to make sure that there's no MFA associated with it. So that means this is a single factor authentication, just your username and your password. But if you're going to have something like that, you need to make sure you're monitoring it. So there should be some type of a query running against your Azure sign in log so to make sure that if those break glass accounts come in, that your as an alert goes on, there's some type of automation that happens within your environment to notify all the parties that, hey, this break glass account was used. Okay, so you have your password is complex, but how long has your password been there? You need to rotate me, right? You need to rotate your break glass accounts. So you need to make sure that your paid great glass accounts are some have some type of password rotation and you're probably doing that um, every 90 days or every 180 days or every six months or whatever the case may be but you need to make sure you're rotating those passwords and then also notifying the the parties that be about the rotation and that it happened successfully so you know if i were you i would do something like implement a ticketing system and you'd have a ticket that goes out every six months and you assign it to somebody and make sure that that happens. And then when you go into your meeting and your governance team uh, for your Azure environment, if we're going about it the right way with a cloud adoption framework approach, then I would make sure that that password gets rotated, there's a ticket associated with it, so this way you have an audit trail. So just in case auditors come in, you're able to provide them that feedback. Okay, so one of the last things you wanna do is make sure you are testing. Testing, testing, and testing some more. You can't talk about you're an IT professional if you aren't doing any testing. So you want to make sure that when you set up your break glass account that you have some testing. So perhaps you have two people in the environment who are going to sign in and see how the team responds that a break glass account was accessed. So you could do something like that, or you could notify the team, hey, we're doing some testing for the break glass accounts and making sure things, um, uh, the automation goes through successfully. So you might have a break glass account to get signed in, then you might, you know, um, stop VPC pairing to some of your networks, something like that, right? Or you might, you know, cause some type of other automation within your environment. So just in case one of the break glass accounts gets compromised, then you safeguard your environment. So there's a bunch of things you can do when it comes to testing. I just want to make sure that you come up with a plan for testing within your environment. So those are my tips for managing your break glass accounts. Please uh, put some information in the comment section. Tell me what you like about it. Tell me if there's something else that you think should have been added into these tips. You know, at the end of the day, when I built Cloud Scholars, it was because I wanted to create a community so that this way we all can learn from each other. I'm always learning. That's one of my models here um, at Cloud Scholars. It's definitely a hashtag that I live by. So I want to thank you again for watching this video. Hopefully by this time I've earned not only a like, but also you subscribe to this page. Once again, my name is Kieran Tross. Here at Cloud Scholars, my goal is to get you from scholar to consultant, and of course, consultant to expert. Thank you. See you next time.